get yourself a snack or, or a drink and, and plop yourself in front of the computer because this is a longer video, but I promise you these are some amazing tips for you when it comes to wipe day. I wiped my second account to level one just to show you guys a whole bunch of things when I talk through this video, but I want you to know they do change some things during wipe time. So they might, you know, put certain items to level two, say, or they might change a barter, but there are some barters that haven't changed in a long time. And there's just this general advice that honestly is just going to be, even if they change things, it's just going to be good advice. So my first thing I want to talk to you about is the hideout itself. Now the hideout is one of these double-edged swords where it can help you out with a lot of tasks. It can uh, craft a whole bunch of stuff, useful items for you. But at the same time, this is going to be a huge money sink. I really like the hideout. I think early game, it is really useful, especially workbenches, your med station, you can craft those meds. But the problem is the more and more you start putting into it, the more money it becomes. It becomes this money pit for you. And you might get so, you know, enthralled with just being like, I need to get like my Bitcoin farm going or I need to get this going. You don't realize how much money you're actually spending in the hideout. So my word of advice to you is, you know, the first levels of things like illumination, your vents, security, lavatory, workbench, all this stuff. It, it's not too bad, right? 50,000 is quite a bit, but the rest is actually pretty cheap. Illumination's 10,000 um vents is only twenty five thousand, but you can see how it really snowballs and how much you can really just start putting into your hideout right away if you want to get a jump start on some people and the problem with that is you might not be making money because maybe your first 10 raids you did really bad to be honest right so what i would tell you to do is put as much money as you're comfortable with at first and then just wait until you start getting out of some scav runs, say, you start getting out of some PMC runs, you start maybe selling to the traders, and you start making a little more money. It is really useful to you at an early wipe to get this up and going, but it's not worth it to you going broke and you not being able to really do anything else for your PMC. So there is a balance you have to make with the hideout and i really want to make sure you guys know that it's a big money sink make sure you have the money to back it up i do want to give you a little bit of a bonus here if you do have the workbench level one which is really useful um what i do with it early wipe and that is i would craft weapon parts and then i'm crafting ak-74 ends now why i'm doing this is because while you're out in the wild 366 isn't the greatest early wipe uh SKSs definitely are though but the thing is you have to remember you're getting a lot of these types of guns from your scav or from killing other scavs and you have to remember that their durability on these weapons are garbage and that means they're going to jam up more and their accuracy is a lot lower so the thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you are if if you're really hard up for money say yes definitely sell it but if I were you I would craft it into weapon parts and then at workbench level one, if you get an AK-74N or if you find some of these weapon parts, what I do is I always strip these wooden stocks and these wooden handguards before I sell them to fence if they are from a scav. And then I craft a brand new one, which will be 100% durability with these weapon parts that I got up here. This is just a little extra tidbit of what I would do if I did have my hideout up and running a little early. I think early game AK-74Ns, it doesn't have the best ammo, don't get me wrong. I'm all about the 76239 ammo, but it's still a, a great gun for a really cheap, reasonable price, and it's worth your time. My next tip is for those people that haven't played in a while. Maybe they took this wipe off. I've heard that many times, actually, this wipe. A lot of people said they just took this wipe off. Or maybe, you know what, it hasn't been early wipe for long enough, so you forgot where all the loot is. I really want to show you this website. I think it's worth its weight in gold. I always talk about it. It's called mapgenie.io. It'll be in the description down below. It's mapgenie.io slash Tarkov. And what you can do here is you can go to any map, let's say shoreline, and it'll show you where every single lootable thing is, where keys spawn, where the locked rooms are, what's behind the locked rooms. This is just a really good resource to remind yourself Oh yeah, that's where all the jackets are, right? Like my favorite thing about early wipe 
not only is it that everyone's using not meta stuff, but it's that everything's super valuable. So you're looting everything again. And that's my favorite part, right? You want to loot duffel bags, jackets, you want to loot everything. And the best way to do that, to find out and have a good reminder of it is through this website. So what I want to do here is you can go to the left hand side and you can press hide all. And then say you, you're like, you know what? Caches are really amazing. They're like, I consider them the slot machines of Tarkov. You never know what you're going to get out of them. Sometimes you strike gold and sometimes they're meh. But what you can do is you can just click it so you can see where all the caches are on one map. And most of the time, the best part about this is you can see, okay, let, let me click on it. You can see a little picture of where it is. So it's really useful information just to give you a little reminder of like, okay, yeah, I forgot that's there. Or say you do want jackets. Okay, where are all the jackets on this map? Because again, keys are so valuable early wipe and jackets hold a lot of keys. So I want to do say a jacket run one, one time when I'm hitting shoreline. Okay, this is where they all are. Perfect. Now it's not perfect. Sometimes there are uh, some things that have changed and they haven't changed it. But most of the time, guys, honestly, this is exactly where everything is. And it's just a really good reminder, especially for key spawns too. So let me uh, get that going for you guys in two seconds. Let me find where it is. Okay, so right here you can press keys and this is where every key spawns. So you can see West Wing spawns right here. And again, sometimes they have pictures, sometimes they don't. Uh, the cottage back entrance key, you can see that it's on these water barrels in cottage. Uh, but it's just a good reminder if you're looking for a certain key or if you're just you know, in that area and you want to see if that key has spawned there. This tool is so useful as just a reminder, just maybe before you go into raid, you're kind of like, okay, I have this goal. Where am I going? Or again, say you're on the first task of trying to find Salua's, right? You can find, okay, where are the meds? Okay. So there's three meds here, but okay. Inside resort. Oh, there's a bunch of med bags. And it'll tell you if the room's locked or not. It's all I want to say is like, this is such a useful tool and you should be using it. Mapgenie.io slash Tarkov hashtag not sponsored, by the way. I just think this is one of the best websites out there. The next thing I want to talk to you about is making sure you loot everything. Now, I know if you've been playing this past wipe, you are very picky about what you take out of rage. You're like, oh, that's useless. That's useless early wipe everything is has has some sort of use to it either selling it to a trader or using it for your hideout but all i want to let you know is to make sure that you are filling up your backpack your rig every single slot you're trying to fill it up so when you go and loot things make sure you just throw it into your backpack or into your tactical rig and then as you stumble upon maybe some more useful items or more expensive items that's when you start you know, dumping stuff out of your backpack. Remember some little one by one item that might be worth 4,000 is worth more than an empty slot. So a big tip I have, especially if you've been playing Tarkov for a while and you got into this, you know, rhythm of being like, I, I don't need to pick that up. I have a lot of rubles or like, that's just useless. It's not useless early wipe. Nothing's useless early wipe. I can honestly say that everything can be sold for a little bit of rubles a little bit of dollars or it can be used for crafting or for your hideout there's some sort of reason to have it and i know space is limited but hey at least you can just sell it then so the one thing i want to talk to you about is just looting and making sure that everything or every single slot is filled with something you don't really have access to bigger backpacks the the best thing you're going to be able to find on a scav is a pilgrim and if you do kill raiders, you might be able to find a bigger backpack, you know, on them. But the biggest backpack you'll just find on a scav is a pilgrim. And the biggest backpack you can buy for a while is the Burkit. So you, you don't have a lot of the space that we're used to with like using tri-zips, attack two, beta twos. So you, we really have to make sure that we're utilizing every little square of space that we have. And one of the best tricks for doing this is actually when you kill a scav or say a player and they have a big rig on them using rigs in your backpack now you can't put really big items in there but you can put a lot of those small barter items or uh items you might need to upgrade your hideout or for crafts so let's just take for example this d3 crx right it has 16 slots and it only takes up nine so 
we're getting seven extra slots of course only by one by two items or one by one but it's still going to utilize so much more space so if you fill up this rig you can still put you know a two by four item here but you can put a lot more one by twos and one by ones in there so always make sure that if you do find a rig throw it in there because it most of the time to be honest it's it's going to be worth its weight to pick up and maybe not be able to pick up the bigger items but you can still pick up a lot of those smaller ones that are worth a lot especially once you get the hideout go or sorry the flea market open that's where you really make your big money so i'm going to tell you a tip i do about looting when i'm early game so i never put a weapon in my weapon slot because you have to remember even if you die you get out with whatever weapon you get out with so early wipe if you guys don't know this peacekeeper mp5 barter for eight brown handled knives is a go-to for a lot of people and what i do is when i kill a scav chances are they they're probably going to have one of these so i put that in this slot area right here that's empty right now and i put it in there so that even if i die hey i'm one closer to the mp5 even if i die i can just take it i still get out with that at least and again if you're going to collect a whole bunch of them during a raid eh, it takes up nothing so that's what i do it's up to you if you want a melee weapon i know with the new voip people are going to want to have melee fights but i always you know i always take out my melee weapon and just put something else there i know i probably don't have to talk about this but it's just a quick reminder for you guys always be using your scavs it's really important they are free money they don't have the best guns for sure remember their guns are always 50 percent durability about and that means their accuracy is terrible but it's still a worth some sort of money b it's worth using sometimes like if you just need a loadout there's no shame in just running out to extract right away as a scab if you don't want to go in there and loot and you just want the the kit because you think it's really good and you need something there's no shame in just running to extract right away and remember with new scav karma system you do get penalized if you kill other scavs it's all up to you how you want to play but remember don't get too frustrated because a lot of people are going to be playing as scavs and they are going to turn on you but you have to remember that their scav karma is going to start plummeting and they're not going to be able to scav every I don't 20 minutes or whatever it is right now it starts getting diminished to 25 30 and, and so on and so on um i i always have positive scav karma i don't like having negative scav karma but again if you want to have negative scav karma and get all this loot from other player scavs or just killing other scavs it's up to you but remember there is a special place for you in hell yes there is jesus is watching remember that uh yeah just use scavs guys it's it's just free make sure you're always using your scav when it comes up barters again are something that you're going to be using constantly because you don't have this infinite amount of rubles unlike you know late wipe you might have a lot more so you want to use barters to your advantage and i'm going to show you some of my favorite ones uh right here this uh bt ammo for two cans of the big tashanka great use of it you can find a lot of these types of items in the corner of Goshen. So if you're on a scav run or if you're a PMC and you're an interchange, make sure you're looting a lot of this food. And I'll explain food and whatnot later because that's also really important. But this barter for BT ammo is very good because that ammo is really strong early wipe. Also, another one is the three small cans of Tashanka for the AKM. Now, I know you need 15 found in raid small cans of Tashanka but somehow if you just put it up your butt or something or if you got a run through say you can use the Tashanka for this or after you're done collecting all 15 then you can start saying okay now I'm, I can get AKMs because honestly 762 PS ammo is king early wipe remember that uh this one's again PP19 love a full auto gun early wipe really great only four t plugs that's not super hard to find and you have to remember that uh those drawers are your friend those filing cabinets always be looting those there's a lot of useful items in there um that's about it for here i don't think there's yeah propane yeah it's good yeah. so this one's actually a lot different i didn't realize this I, I forget when they changed it but this used to be two duct tape and now they changed it to humpback 
So this also is raid. So you want the Salua with raid, which isn't super rare, but it is more on the rare side. But definitely, I would say humpback, super easy to get. Like I said before, in interchange Goshen corner, you're going to find a lot of food. So make sure you're saving humpback. And then this one is your tried and true one matches for your painkillers. You always want to have painkillers on you. And, and this is a good one. Uh, yeah, H2. Yeah, the H2O2. Great for water. Again, you're going to need a lot of hydration. You're going to need a lot of food. And I will explain that probably in the next section. Skier has, I don't think he has much. No, he doesn't really have anything that I think you should be paying attention to. Um, Peacekeeper definitely is very, very good. He does have the M67 grenades for two Zibos. And again, filing cabinets, you're going to find a bunch of Zibos. The uh, MP5, which we talked about earlier for the knives, and that's why I don't carry a melee. And also, I didn't notice this. The UMP45 is actually seven of the black handle ones. So you can start doing this and collecting black handle or brown handle, and you're still going to get something for it. But the two king barters that I really want to emphasize on this section are these two backpacks, okay? Storage is your best friend, especially this day backpack and even this MBSS. It's big enough. You want the bigger the backpack you can get, the better. But an MBSS for a damaged hard drive, these are very common to find in computers. You're not going to have a hard time finding them. And then a day pack, all you need is a DVD too. That's these two items aren't hard to find. So if you're scaving on interchange shoreline and you're hitting computers, you can definitely find these. And for this Burke or for this day pack or this just MPSS, these are your golden barters for sure. They're just so useful. I before you weren't able to get the bigger backpacks from Ragman level one. Now you can, but you still only be able to get the uh, MBSSs. And man, you can buy the Burkets now, but they're twenty three thousand, right? And you know what? Why not just barter for the day pack? These are your two like golden barters right here for sure your mechanic has a couple of barters too that i want to show off definitely this one the mp133 shotgun not only is it because it has most items already on it that you need for gunsmith part one but it's just a badass shotgun and you know how good shotguns are in this game and all you need is two elite pliers and a red screwdriver you can find that in toolboxes in many rooms of customs you're going to find these and this is a this is a damn good barter. Also, another UMP barter for the DVD, the hard drive, and two caps. Nothing crazy. That is very reasonable. So if you already have all the backpacks you need or you're looking for a gun, this this might be it, man. I, I'm just saying this is really, really nice. And of course, the ammo case, thermite's really hard to find. And same thing with green gunpowder. But just know if you find these early, Ooh, storage is your best friend early wipe in your uh, in your um in your stash it's your best friend so the the bigger you can get uh for storage the, the better it is and then ragman to be honest he doesn't really have anything you know this one's not bad if you can find bleaches for the ratnik awesome you know you can say that the burkett here the barter is good but you don't find many of these helmets let's be honest you don't find many of them you're you're definitely going to find more on uh more of the uh damaged hard drives and dvds that's way easier so just a little reminder just go through your barters especially because new wipe things are going to change this barter might not be here the barter might change but this is just a reminder of like hey go look at your barters right away and see if anything's changed see what you're going to go for see what's going to be really useful to you because yeah barters are your uh, bread and butter early wipe for sure dehydration and energy is your enemy definitely early wipe because you can't really get much from therapists i'm hoping they make it so that you can pay a price and go to a hundred percent energy and hydration after the raid from therapist just like she does with health but i don't think that's coming anytime soon at least i don't think so so right now you can get uh, a bottle of water for h2o2 and you can also buy the water just for twelve thousand rubles but as you can see, you can't buy anything for energy, which is kind of lame, right? And it's really tough. So I'm going to show you the best place 
for these items, at least that I know of, and that's Interchange uh, Goshen. I'm going to show you where to go. So we're at the front tills of Goshen right here. You can see here's Goshen. I'll show you we're at the front of it. And we're just going to go to the back left. And this area just got uh, a huge buff this past wipe. It's crazy. So if you didn't play this past wipe, you might not know about it. But in the back left here, you can find so much food and drink. It's actually quite insane. These back shelves, as you can see, sorry, the, the can of Coke. Um, it, it's just filled with, um, with things for energy and for hydration. Look at it. See, we already want halfway there to BT ammo. So you're going to want to loot all this stuff. If you scav in, I'm sure someone might have hit it before you, but maybe they left you a couple of things. And remember that if you get to this area or if you already have a big stockpile in your stash, when you find food and drink in your in raid and you're a PMC, make sure you're drinking it. It's always going to give you a little bit of skill points and the best thing to do right away is get your metabolism skill up. So if you already have enough in your high or in your stash, you're feeling comfortable. You're like, you know what? I don't need to take this out. Drink it or eat it because it will boost up that that metabolism skill, like I said. And I don't know if they fixed it, but they don't cap the map metabolism skill. So you you really do shoot it up really fast. So that's my tip for you. There you go. Just because you're level one doesn't mean you can't mod your weapons either. You don't have access to really good mods, but you might find something in raid that you really want to use, like some sort of grip or some sort of sight. And you know what, to be honest, there's a lot of ways you can mod your weapons. So if we go to Prapper, uh, you can see that a you, you can just buy the Cobra site if you want this. And remember that it says compatible with available. Most of the time you can just hover and see if you have a gun of some sort that is compatible with this attachment. And then there's also things like, say, this AK 100 handguard so that you can put a grip on there. This is this is something really good to have. And same thing with the Bastion dust cover, which is over on uh, skier so that you can put a site on here and you can buy many sites. You can buy the MRS, you can go to Peacekeeper, you can buy the Fast Fire uh, 3, you can buy the Delta Point, which right now is meta. The Delta Point is fantastic and clean. But I just want to let you know that there are a lot of ways you can mod your weapon still even at level one. So again, quickly before you start going into raid and getting into you know into into the whole tarkov wipe what i do is i always go over the the traders i always go over them and i just see what they have and what's new because they're putting in quite a bit of attachments i know they're going to put in some different ones they might have made it so now you know say the bastions level two now or the you know ak 100s level two but just look and see what you can get you can still get the rk6 foregrip which is good it, it you know it only gives you minus one percent recoil but five ergonomics it, it's not a lot but it is only 7200 rubles not bad so just remember that if you want to mod your gun you're not super limited but limited enough but you can still do some work to them so aside from the barters that I showed you, you know, with your MP5, your UMP, I want to show you my go-to guns. And these are just my go-to guns on wipe day. It's either the SKS or preferably, to be honest, I like to use the VPO 136. It's 762. You can mod it, like I said, with a couple of pieces like the Bash and the AK-100, put a grip on it. You can, you can do quite a bit to it if you want, but... Aside from that, it just uses the best ammo available, which I think is the 762 PS ammo. These two guns, the, the VPO 136 and your SKS are just fantastic guns that I would highly recommend to anyone. And the best part about the SKS for sure is you can put, say, 10 rounds into it. You can put 10 on the outside and then you can put the rest of your ammo, say, in your gamma or in your alpha or whatever. So you don't have to, you know really worry about losing a bunch of ammo at once and the same thing goes with the vpo 136 if you have a magazine for it let's just say this is the magazine you could put it into your gamma or you can just have a magazine in it a magazine outside of it and then of say 60 rounds of ammo into your 
alpha or into your gamma so that you're not risking a lot of ammo at once i know it's not super pricey ammo but it, i'm pretty sure it's 91 rubles per round of ps ammo so you know 60 rounds right away is 5400 you know and then you don't have to say risk another 60 rounds you can have that into your gamma those are my two choices of the guns that i really like I know this video is getting really long, so I'm trying to just wrap it up here with a nice little bow. And my last tip for you is to have fun. I know it's stupid to say that, and I know you're like, duh, geeks, I'm going to have fun. But in all honesty, have fun. Take this game at your own pace. Everyone thinks that everyone's going for level 42 as fast as they can. And yes, content creators and the hardcore players are trying to do that. They want to get their hands on things and make videos for you guys. But you have to remember that's only like 10% of the player base, to be honest. 90% of the player base are casual players going at their own pace. And it's so much better that way. Because remember that time you need the bronze pocket watch and you just keep dying over and over and over and how frustrated you get? I want you to make sure that if you keep dying doing a certain task or you're just not having fun because you have to play the certain map and kill, say, these scavs or something, switch it do something else do money runs just do scavs do something to switch it up because you can get frustrated really fast in this game and it's not all about going to level 42. maybe you want to get that scav junk box which i think is one of the most important things early wipe to get and it's 1.1 million so instead of being like okay i i'm trying to get these tasks done okay now i'm going to focus on you know getting rubles and playing different maps that i know because i want to get the scav junk box Make yourself other goals than just getting tasks done. And remember that now that there's these daily tasks and there's these weekly tasks, there's other ways for you to get rep for your traders than just doing these monotonous tasks. So in the end, please just have fun. It's really exciting that we're getting a brand new map. It's really exciting that we're getting all these new weapons and attachments. But what's really exciting is that it's a brand new wipe. It, you're starting fresh. And I just want you to have fun. Thank you so much for watching this video. It really does mean a lot. And if I forgot anything, please, please, please put it in the comments below. If you have some tips that I didn't talk about, I would love to hear them. Also, if you do like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's free for you guys, but it does mean the world to me. I'll be putting out a lot of content for 1212 because a lot of people are just going to really enjoy it. I think there's so much new stuff that we have to explore and I'm ready to give you guys the content. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. And yeah, thank you so much. And until next time, I'll talk to everyone later.